Guys, it is time for the According to Low Elo podcast. My name is Dean. And my name is Tyler. And it is Wednesday. And, you know, we like to um, have some kind of goofy, maybe we don't, but we've been trying to figure out, you know, ideas in between patch weeks sure. and stuff, you know. And we got a pretty fun idea today. Um, we're going to go on Reddit. We're going to sort by new. And we're going to play the game of based or not. So we're going to be looking at some, probably some unhinged. Uh, Reddit posts, and 100%. <laughs> we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're gonna give our opinion and react to them see if they're uh, justified or not based or not so uh, yeah that'll that'll be pretty fun um, but first of all as always shout out the YouTube guys come on over to the YouTube we're, t- we're trying to put gameplays up every week I uh, here I'll I'll show you the um, the most recent short last week um, it was was it Saturday. Uh, Tyler, Tyler was playing solo queue <laughs> and I was just like, you know, what would be funny is if I just put my camera on and started recording, spectating him and I spectated it live. Um, and man, what a, what a wild ride. That was so fucking funny. But here, here's a clip of this wonderful Silas stealing the gin alt under turret and then <laughs> dying. And I lost my shit because that was unbelievable. Honestly, um, if that Silas was half decent, we could have won. Yeah, actually, like I, I feel like there's a lot of times because I don't really play ADC all that often. There's a lot of times where I play ADC and my goal is just don't, don't get your ass kicked. Uh, and I felt like that game I was actually kicking ass, and like I wasn't getting my ass kicked. I mean, there was plays where I got caught or whatever, you know, it happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, I felt like I wasn't the problem, <laughs> and we lost. I'm like, dude, how the fuck do we lose when I like? Honestly, feel like I'm not the one who's losing this game for us. You know what I mean? But it happens. But yeah, it was actually it was, a good game, though. It it was. It was like a forty something minute game too. So yeah, um, I thought that'd be a fun idea. I'm trying to get Tyler one of these times to do the do the same for me. If I hop into a ranked game, just have him spectate and um, give his commentary. So that video will be going up on Saturday. Uh, and then speaking of Saturday, guys, we've been talking about our giveaway stream. Our 150th uh, episode. It's not right at our 150th, but this is the only time we're able to get together and do this. Sure. Um, so we have we're gonna be playing games for a couple hours. We're gonna be doing RP giveaways, and uh, we we have two teams right now. We have Team Azap and Team uh, Thoticus, and we're trying to get. They need. Let's see where where are we at? Uh, how much money more do they need? We need a, a jungle and a mid for Thoticus. Yaddy, and then yaddy, 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 yaddy. <laughs> we we actually you know uh, Azap's team might be f- uh, done. We're just waiting on it to see if the mid laner. So if you play jungle or mid, and you want to uh, play for RP prize, uh, please come into the Discord and link hit the link tree in the description of this video or in Spotify or wherever you're listening right now, and join the Discord. Come hop in and talk to the peeps. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Tyler's coming over. We're gonna we're gonna be casting. So, uh, are we gonna wear like button up suits or something or shirts? Should we button up suits? I don't know about button up yeah, suits, button. but <laughs> you, know, you know what the fuck you mean. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It'll look fancy. It'll be good. And I'll probably end up uploading the entire stream to YouTube. So, there you go. um. It'll, it'll be cool. But, yeah, guys, make sure you come into the Discord for all the information. And if you want to, uh, you can, if, as long as you're uh, in the stream, following the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash um, ATLE pod. Um, according to Low Elo podcast. Let me just double check that. Because I think. I think it's according to Low Elo pod, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that is it. So, if you, twitch.tv slash according to Low Elo pod, come over here, follow, follow the channel. You got to make sure you're following. And we'll be live around 12 p.m. PST. That is 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time for uh, Purple, because yeah. he doesn't know his time zones. And um, <laughs> so yeah, you can you'll be able to we'll do random hourly RP giveaways. And then of course, if you're participating in the we're calling it like a tournament, even though there's only two teams, um, you will uh, can earn a little bit more RP if you're on the winning team. So that is this Saturday on the 15th. It's gonna be a lot 12 of fun. PM. It's gonna be dope. So last last well the when we had our first giveaway stream, we had like we had about twenty people watching and 
there was a lot of prizes being given away. So uh, it, it's pretty fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. So make sure you guys are there on Saturday. And uh, yeah, that it'll be awesome. Yes, it will. I'm looking cool. forward to it. So, All right. So here we go. Let's move on to the main, main segment. So like I said, we went to Reddit. <laughs> the, unfortunately. The, yeah, unfortunately, the ces- cesspool that is... In particular, the cesspool that is r slash League of Legends. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Oof. Um, and yeah. you know, there's always the top posts, and they're pretty, you know, well put together posts. And then, but if you sort search by search by new, sort by new. There's some good ones. There's some crazy things that you sometimes <laughs> see, and a lot of the times they actually get deleted by the mods. So yeah. So Tyler and I hit sort by new. We're not going to refresh the page or anything. We're just going to go off what we're seeing. And I don't want to make this seem like we're we're shitting on these people. I wasn't even sure if I should show the redditors usernames, but I feel like if they're posting it online, it's fair game. You're, yeah, you're I not guess. doxing anybody at this point. They've doxed sure. themselves by by putting it up here. So, so all right. So let's see. League of Tibber. When did it become League of Tibbers? I think it's been like that for a hot minute in the title. I don't know. Weird. But I've never. I, <laughs> I don't fucking remember that. All right, all right. So there's there's a couple of good ones. Um, I don't really care about the Bows. Yeah, right. Uh, Here. I don't really care care about theory crafting slash build sites. Though some of you might. Um, the one, the first one that I see, there's two of them that that stuck out to me. The first one that I see that I think looks interesting is um, League of Legends content that everyone needs to watch at least once. All right, so let's open this in a new tab. Let's take a look. Yeah, it says, uh, hey, let me open a new tab. There we go. It says here, what content do you think every League of Legends player should consider watching at least once? Content could be anywhere from educational to memes and esports related, e.g. Faker vs. Ryu, Zed Fight, Arcane, etc. Specific series set, game, content creator, etc. What would you recommend? Um, now, I wonder ahead. if this, I mean, I, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a, like a, um, a dig on me, but I really need to finish Ruin Nation. Um, I don't know if this counts for. I guess this is just. Oh, the Ruin well, King says, game. You haven't finished. No, the, the book. The book. Okay. The book. Okay. Uh, I mean, he says watch, but reading it is really awesome. Um, I still need to finish that. Right. Uh, definitely, you gotta watch Arcane. I. I mean, it. You can watch Arcane. You have to watch Arcane. And if you didn't play league, you can watch arcane. Like oh, it has, absolutely. it's not, you know, it's not, you don't have to play the game to watch it. Um, right. but I like this idea of like putting up like maybe like five things for a person that's being introduced to the game. Right. Um, as far Ar- as pr- 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 arcane play, is one, there's yeah. the, there's the, the old champion spotlights, which are hilarious. The oh. old freak ones, like the old, old ones. And then the actual champion spotlights that uh, Magic Carp use Fly used to do, those oh, were good. great. Uh, <laughs> but those those aren't. Yeah, I, I don't know. If those are suited for like a new player, but I think it's suited for a somewhat seasoned player because they're hilarious. Um, I think a good idea would be going through the League of Legends uh, YouTube and watching yeah. all the cinem- cinematics. Those are good. Not Those the beginning really ones, not the Clash of Fates, whatever the original trailer for the game is. No, but that the, one is due the, the Twist of Fate. Um, a New and, Dawn. And newer, yeah, yeah, those are good. Um, let's see. Uh, like you said, the the Zed, the Faker vs. Ryu Zed fight, I, I think every player, even if you don't watch esports, it's just such a classic League of Legends moment. Um, obviously, I think that's what really cemented esports to be as good as it is, but uh not even just that the the moment itself is just so good the cast is so good i mean that's a i think oh. it was monte cristo on the cast there yeah yeah i think so um, um the cast the other is one, fantastic everything about that whole the other one fantastic. that really comes to mind is uh, i had to look it up i have it on screen right now but it was worlds uh 2017 and this is part of the group stage. It was EDG versus SKT. Do you remember the cast with flowers where he says, Faker Shockwave finds them all. Like, it's this no, monstrous. Oh, man. So, at this point in the game, EDG is up. Um, what's, can I do quick math? The EDG is up 10,000 gold. Jesus. They are up nine kills. SKT has zero kills. And they <laughs> catch. SKT catches EDG all in mid lane. With a, let me, uh, if you're watching it, you're watching it right now. Massive, 
Rakan engage with an Oriana ball, five man shockwave with an equalizer, or, or excuse me, and then a Twitch opening up and spray and pay, pray, and it just the game ends. And they were downtown. It's a fucking amazing. Of course, you know it's Captain Flowers shout casting, right? And it's awesome. Like it's so fucking nasty. That's a perfectly but, executed team fight. Like when you're like, down and you got to go for broke because you're gonna lose if you don't. That's how it's done. <laughs> yeah that that one you got to look up. That one is legendary. Oh yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other pro play crazy. Um, when when Bjergsen first pulled out Zillion mid, I don't remember when that what game that was um or this the good one is 2020 uh lcs playoffs uh backs against the wall against golden guardians and they let him get zillion mid and he carries tsm to the finals with zillion mid and it's like why did you let him have that pick why did you let bjergsen have that pick but i think even even better than that is when he uh when when he first pulled it out and just shocked everybody with his, like, why is he playing mid zillion? Uh, that was pretty good. Phoenix as Azir, I think 2014 or 15. Uh, he made a great play on the bot side of the map and Phoenix was, was kind of a, a downtrodden player at the time, had a, almost a career resurrecting player, career highlight play, you know? Um, what, I'd I probably mean, say any world's finals. I was gonna say probably. the last year's finals. <laughs> last good. year's finals, uh T one and um uh, was it Dam <laughs> One? No. No, it wasn't Dam One. Who the fuck I don't even remember oh, Jesus. I'm looking. <laughs> DRX. DRX yeah, DRX. T one DRX. That was a great series. Uh with an astonishing win, so that was pretty good too. Uh, the Cloud9 run in 2018, I think it was? Yep, yep, I made the semis. That was a good one, too. If, if you're an NA fan, obviously we talk more to NA people than we do anybody else, so we're yeah. going to be a little bit NA skewed when it comes to esports, but definitely those are some things that um, you should watch if you are an NA League of Legends player. All right, I'll, I'll say that's a based idea. That's, yeah. like, that's a cool idea to maybe compose a list like that. I do want to look at the one that's right above it where it says a recent document given to me in a rank lobby by a fellow teammate. Have you seen these posts where like no. people put a presentation together? No. So okay, let's so, look at it. My one okay, year we're, we're looking at how it affects you. Okay. Right. So this is, these are pretty fucking funny. So, <laughs> okay. so let's see my story. I have recently been banned from typing in chat until March 30th, 2024. Oh my God. I believe that this is this punishment is completely unreasonable and uncalled for. I have contacted Riot and asked for my chat logs, and this is all they've given me. His uh, name is I Kite You, so it says, I know you have chat on. Type to me. What are you doing, man? Senna, are you a fucking dumbass? You did that to me, too. Don't know how the game works. Probably oh Senna IRL. Okay. <laughs> Senna, what the fuck are you doing? I want to say such horrible things to you. You look like um, Senna IRL. Okay, uh, double minority L. I think wow. we get. We, I think we get. Yeah, wow. we get the point. He, he says, as oh. you can see, I am completely reasonable player and have done almost nothing wrong. I have five permanently banned accounts. I'm not trying to get make it six. <laughs> it is. It is a constant <laughs> emotional battle between me and Riot, and this has been going on for years. I. Yeah. You okay. might need this. You man, need help, this, sir. Okay. You need help. We'll, we'll see what what's the next. Uh, uh, how I will yeah, communicate now. Since I have no access to chat for a year, I'll mostly use pings to communicate with my team. I will list my pings and what they mean below. Question mark. This is the question mark ping. This means I'm confused on what you are doing and think of you as okay, mentally maybe, okay. Maybe we need to just move on from this well, one because this is this one's completely unhinged. I don't even want to read. This is, to read. this is not... Wait, hold on, hold on. The Tom Kench emote. This means I'm pleased with you out of taking a liking, liking to you. I, I think I've come to the conclusion I don't need to read what these other two slides are. I think this guy is mentally unstable, and he might need some help, and he probably needs to... Let's just say, obviously the person that posted <laughs> the sub or to the Reddit yeah, wasn't he's trolling. the person. Right. Um, If this popped up in my rank lobby, I'm dodging. I don't give a shit. I will say, this is funny, it is what I asked from you. This is all I'm asking for my team while playing these games, that you listen to my pings and don't expect me to type... I have defined my pings in previous slides. Hope you can remember what they mean. Have fun and play good. 
please don't flame. Excuse me. This is like clearly the flame king. Please don't flame. Yeah, man, it's it's no problem. I have five accounts that are perma banned, and I'm working on number six. How the fuck do you get a year chat ban? By um, read right. read, read the pings. It, I'm good. It'll be I'm on good. the screen, guys. Just nope, I already took it off the screen. Okay. I'm not good. <laughs> it's saying, bad. I'm not okay. gonna read it out loud because that was bad. But yes. So uh, homeboy, <laughs> not the person making the post, homeboy. but the person posting yeah. in the game with this Google Doc. Completely unhinged. All right. Let's move on. Um, let's, let's see. see. I do see something about a brand uh, one-trick pony around D4 to D2. He really needs changes. How long is this? It might be a little... Let's see how okay, long it is. Oh, it's not too it's bad. Not too okay, bad. Okay. So I bounced around Diamond to Challenger in ELO last 10 plus years of playing League. I picked up brand around a year ago and I've been playing almost exclusively since to see how high I can climb with him and he is in desperate need of buff slash changes. If you look at the high elo brand one tricks, ton of them consistently go zero X Y with X and Y being some number above 10. These people are with hundreds slash thousands of games on brand. They feed their asses off on a consistent basis. Here's some proof. Click on any of these players. You'll see tons of hard inting from people who play this champ nonstop. Please buff him. Right. Um, uh, not based. First thing I'm going to say, first thing I'm going to say, this guy is a hundred percent not high. Diamond four or diamond yeah, two. Right. This guy is not high elo. So, <laughs> the top comment. Buffing him would create a menace in silver it, elo. Yes. yes, it would. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Uh the the theme is everyone on the on R slash League of Legends is high elo. Everyone claims to be it, Yes. My friend, if if you're high elo, post your fucking OP.gg and right. then and then write your complaint. Um I think if you're that good at the game, you would probably realize Brand definitely does not need any changes. No. Uh, I think one. How long ago was it when they made those um, like quality of life changes? Where they is it if his um, if he kills minions with his passive attached to them, it like refunds mana or something? Like they did little things like that to make him more. Because I feel like all he was doing was being played support. Yes, and the They're other trying to push the, him back the in the mid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he kind of um, sucks in mid, honestly. <laughs> I mean, he's just very immobile, and yes. if if, he, if you're not, you. yeah, it's not reliable stun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I not based. <laughs> That's not, honestly, no, yeah. not based at all. Um, um. Okay. Let's see what else we need. Uh, let me see predictions for ASUs. Let me see. So he said, so as we know, we confirmed that Lee Sin and Teemo are getting ASUs and should arrive in around 2024. I predict that Riot will announce that Misfortune and Ash are getting ASU in 2024. That will be due to 2025, and Lux and Vayne will be announced in 2025. Dude. <laughs> hold on. Just look at the only comment on this. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me go back up to it. The only comment says. Jesus Christ, I hope I'm not still playing this game in 2026. <laughs> There's no shot Riot has plans that far for advance. three years into the future. There's no fucking way. Riot's currently working on what they're going to do with the LCS. I don't think they're worried about ASUs for these champions I mean, years from now. He does say this is just a prediction, and I could be wrong. I think you're 99% wrong. Um what do you what do you think? Do you think right do you think Misfortune and Ash need ASUs? I know I think Ash got voice changes rather recently. Like her I think so. dialogue. Misfortune for sure needs some dialogue updates. Yes. Um I think any champion that still says summoner in their dialogue needs to be like pushed to the front. Um Ah uh, does Lux need one? I mean, he, he he's just kind of listing champions that don't say many things in game. Right. I don't know. They just need. I don't know that they need ASUs. They just need some some new voice lines, maybe. I know. They a, need... An ASU insinuates they're going to change the model and this and that and the other thing. You know. I mean, I guess I guess Lee Sin needed that. His base model is kind of clunky. Yeah. Um, Timo. Lee yeah, Sin, I guess Lee Sin could use some some. Um, some voice lines too so 
Timo, I guess, too. He says like four fucking things. Okay. Um, yeah, but no one plays Timo. Like, no, no, fuck that. Leave Timo where he is. <laughs> I'll say it's it's not based. I mean, yeah, it's based I think this guy's totally wrong. Downvote him right. to oblivion. Okay, got it. No. Oh, I like this one right here. It says ranks aren't real. I clicked on that one. I was looking at it, and I will say, I understand this man's pain. Um, so it says, so just curious, is iron simply better than bronze? I'm on a 10 game loss streak where I stop my lane and then the enemy team is just fed by the time I run for fights that it's impossible to play. And I will say in the last, Oh boy. Oof, I think I played fifth, the 13 games in a row where I lost. I was playing with purple last oh, night there's as well. First fucking issue. No, 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 no. I was playing by myself for <laughs> like 12 of those games. And then it took. Uh, and Aram, and even even Pearl's like, damn, I guess we just lose. And I'm like, yeah, even in these games where like I feel like we actually have the team advantage, even on an Aram, I'm just losing because people make dumb fucking plays and do dumb shit. Um, to the point where it does feel like ranks aren't real. I'm like, I'm playing with people that are fucking bronze and that are just annihilating their like three tier higher silver counterparts. It's like, why why are we losing? Why is the game over at? Literally at 15 minutes, you could tell the game is over, and there's nowhere to go because you've lost all of your outer towers. Like, why does this keep happening? What What am I doing wrong? Where can I fucking play better? And so I know that this guy's asking a question. Obviously, this guy's really low elo if he's like iron slash low bronze. But like, the same shit happens in fucking silver, uh, dude. The same shit happens in fucking gold. The same shit happens in fucking platinum, diamond man like it's it's just actually like a a game thing like when when you don't have five players that can play coherently you just lose i to be fair when you're i clicked on this guy's op.gg because he posted it in the comments Uh this guy is bronze four zero lp um i think at this elo it I don't even know what's going on in these games. Right. This is true. That is a thing. So, I mean, I'll say, like, maybe in mid-silver is probably when you get people actually turning their computer monitors on and playing. Right. That's probably the biggest thing. Or maybe, you know, plugging in their keyboard. That might help. Um, Yeah. uh, Man, I'm not... I don't want to roast this guy, but I'm looking through his, like, games. He has zero control awards placed, like... No wards. CS is abysmal. Right. This is just a classic. It's it's your own fault, man. Um, so here's is is iron simply better than bronze? Mm, I think bronze is higher. Isn't it go iron and then bronze? Yes. He's just wondering if like it was easier to win. It's because people on the other side of the fucking the other team didn't have their monitors on. Clearly, that's why iron seemed easier, but. Also, I, Iron, though, it only takes one person that knows what the fuck they're doing to just get out of there real quickly. Oh, this guy's playing Trinomir, too. How do you lose? Yeah, and Iron with or Bronze with Trinomir. Like, you have to just be playing like a bum. Yeah, I don't know. The game, the game is certainly in a weird spot. It's one of these patches where it's just fucking awful right now, so. I, I feel this guy's play, pain, but. I feel this guy's pain. You should know better than to. Take come to Reddit and put your frustrations in, like, especially if you're low. Yeah, they're just gonna talk shit to you. So, uh, base or not, that's a good question. Somewhere in the middle, because like I understand what what he doesn't understand is that, or what this person I keep saying he, my apologies, what this person doesn't understand is that that's not gonna change through the Mm -hmm. game. You have to learn to overcome that. It's just not gonna change. It doesn't matter what rank you are. Every rank has the same complaint that it feels that the game feels a little too leveraged on what everybody else is doing and not enough on what you're doing um, to have a, a big impact. So based or not, uh, I guess I lean slightly towards not based, yeah. but, he, but he has a fucking point. He just doesn't know. He doesn't know what point that he has. I think is why I'd say not based. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. What about the one directly under that homogenization of melee ad itemization all right so here's here's a little something it's kind of long but let's see he says over the last few patches i've been noticing some interesting trends in itemization for melee ad champs other than juggernauts and champs that get huge value from sunderer most ad champs seem to be starting to build and performing best with the same set of items eclipse less often prowlers cleaver serildas mirror mana ravenous and ga 
Bruisers now largely build class cannon, and assassins often issue lethality in favor of these percent pen and high AD items. Uh, I have a few ideas for why this is happening, but I'm curious what other people think. To me, it seems like two things are going on. After patch 12.10, percent pen is just overtuned in general, and especially compared to lethality. By mid-game, even ranged champs with no armor items have enough base armor that you get more armor pen from Cerildas or a stacked cleaver than from lethality legendaries. And two, diver slash fighters need to be able to threaten lethal on squishies with a full skill rotation, and bruiser mythics don't offer enough damage to guarantee this for most champs. The extra survivability, stickiness, or sustained combat power isn't worth much without being able to kill squishies in one set of cooldowns. Waiting for another rotation gives them too much time to cut you slash cut you out slash reposition. This is even more pronounced now that ADCs are stronger at two, two items than they were before. So I have two things to add, and I think the top comment kind of hits it. Um, ADCs are way worse, and mages are too, in my opinion. So ADCs, <laughs> excuse me, even though they have higher armor. They're still squishy to all fucking hell. And I don't know if that's because they're these champions that this guy's talking about are <clears throat> building more raw damage and percent um, uh, penetrations. That lethality doesn't matter. Though I will say, anytime I play ADC and there's a fucking assassin on the map, I feel like I have to play like the biggest bitch because that assassin gets onto you. You're fucking dead. One rotation and you're done. Um, so I don't know... That he's 100% right, because I feel like it doesn't matter if there's an assassin, the ADC's dead. But he may have a point with the fighter slash bruiser. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. He kind of just... He's kind of right, though. People still building a fuck ton of Eclipse. That champions that shouldn't be able to build that item, right? Well, I don't understand his... And again, it's also answered in the top comment, where it's like... He said... Percent pen is overtuned and better than lethality. But... He said the top comment, the top comment, even at late game, if you have a hundred armor, which most people don't have ADCs, uh, that's only 30 pen from Sherelda's. Right. If you're building like, I don't understand. Like, I don't think it is over tuned. Cause uh, like I said, if you're building percentage, you're only going to get that one, that one item. Cause you can only build one last whisper item. Right. But you can build all lethality and have a bigger the flat pen will overtake the percentage. So I don't understand what the fuck. Right. How, yeah. Cause he says the math doesn't even make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. A hundred armor and then 30 pen is literally 30. And then that's it. That's all your items. If you have one last whisper item. Right. Or if you have three lethality items, you have, I think 46. Yeah. You're going to have average. more if, if your target. So at hitting, yeah. At a hundred armor. Still, armor. Better. still better. So I, I think homeboy just doesn't, I, he's he's got a point that a lot of them see, but it seems like um, even mages tend to build the same items right now, and, and ADCs as well. Like a lot of ADCs building Gale Force, because uh, a lot of those champions don't have dashes, so they you just get a free dash. Um, not a whole lot of ADCs are building. Um, well, like GA. No, oh, they're not a lot of building GA, but um, uh, uh, what's the bow? The bow mythic. Um, I want to call it cringe bow. And shield I bow? Yeah, shield bow. Shield bow. Not a lot of ADCs are building shield bow right now. It's Kraken Slayer or Gale Force, or you're building um, Eclipse. Because uh, that's just how it, you're playing a poke ADC who's building Eclipse. You're not building Dust Blade unless you're Ezreal. You probably build Dust Blade. Ezreal doesn't count as an ADC. I think we say this all the time because Ezreal can build literally any fucking item he wants as an ADC. Whatever he buys doesn't fucking matter because it's not in the Mythic, it's in everything else. And even then, he could build any fucking item. So really, that champion doesn't count, and he's the only one that builds, I think, Dusk Blade currently as his highest win rate. Um, but the all the Titanics and the Bork users, um, there's a, there's a lot more I think in the in the fighter world than there are in the tanks. Tanks right now are generally building Jack Show. It's not even a whole lot building Heart Steel, really. Yeah, I mean, unless you're like. Unless you know you're going to be in lane long enough and like you're playing Cho'Gath. Sure. I think that's probably the best. Um, his second point where he says divers fighters need to be able to threaten lethals on squishies with a full skill rotation and bruiser mythics don't offer enough damage to guarantee this. Uh, I And then he says the survivability stickiness and sustain, or sustained power isn't worth 
much without being able to kill. I don't know. I feel like has this guy ever played if Kane? I, I would say uh, if you if you have like <laughs> re, a red cane uh, gore drinker yes. and like maybe like Death Dance or uh, he threatens uh, one shot at with or with Black Cleaver, right? You're. He's, he's that, threatening one-shot capability but as Rost. Is, he shouldn't. He shouldn't be able to threaten one-shot capability as a Shadow Assassin. But Rost should be a two-rotation kill. You know what I mean? Well, I'm saying, like, if you're tower diving, like, you're... I don't know. Maybe maybe Kane was a bad idea because he can become invulnerable. Um, but I, I disagree. I think the whole okay. sustained combat power is... What about Aatrox? N- Aatrox, yeah, sure. Like if we were talking about him building Gore Drinker, um, right? I'm just sorry. I'm just talking yeah. about. I th- I feel like Bruiser items, Gore Drinker as the biggest example. I think is still worth it. I, think um, so. I don't know all the stats it gives you. It's so it's worth it. You don't have to one shot someone. <laughs> no. Like you're not gonna be. It's not just gonna be you most of the time, or or uh, it's gonna be you only like in lane. Right. Or, you're gonna have a team. You don't have to fucking be the one killing it. Sure. So, or like, uh, okay, I mean, maybe Jax is a good example. Jax is one who uses Sunder just because he wants a Sheen, um, which is why he typically goes Sunder or Triforce, maybe. But typically, you're still going Sunder for the Sunder penetration. He, that tells damage. you that tells you that either a that item's overtuned or or Triforce is undertuned because it doesn't even feel like there's a fucking like. Theoretically, there's a discussion that you go Sunderer or Triforce, but like practically, you're building Sunderer. Like, Sunderer, I mean, why are you building Triforce? <laughs> I mean, especially with champions like Jax, who right. do a lot of mixed damage and they benefit right. off the uh, mythic passive. The split, Plus, right. it's like the there's the raw damage, the Sheen proc, and the heal is just way better. I don't know, I. <clears throat> I, I disagree with him saying that divers and fighters do not need, uh, don't need to be able to, don't need to be like threatening no, I uh, agree. lethal damage all, or squishies at least. I agree. I feel like, yeah. And there's, there's, other, there's more comments on here too. This guy made another, so someone made just saying, I don't agree with you at all. And then he goes, well, the, the point is you have both assassins and a majority of the fighter slash bruiser cast opting into the same set of items while ignoring items designed for their respective classes. It's probably not intended for ribbon J4 Aatrox to be performing best when ignoring bruiser mythics and going the same pen slash AD build as Zed goes, who ignores lethality items. And then someone, and then the guy re- responded again saying, I highly disagree. First of all, the three examples you gave are bad because historically ribbon J4 and Aatrox have all had a history of going straight AD assassin. It just depends on the meta. It wasn't long ago they were all building Gore Drinker. Also, again, you're factually incorrect. Zed's most popular and winning build is Prowler's Hydra Core into Lethality. Just like, again, Lethality Mythics are going to be the best for pen on Squishies. 20 flat pen and 4 to 20% armor pen uh, beats a flat 30% any day. I'm personally seeing tons of varied build paths, at least when compared to the variety League has reasonably available with so few items to work with. Many different sets of champs all have builds that fit them, and many of those have very adaptable builds based on composition. And I kind of agree. There's a lot of, like, situational items. I think the core items kind of remain the same. But even then, there's some some variation. Um, like, like Jinx is obviously very good with Kraken Slayer, but, like, maybe that one game you need to not die to the assassin so you build uh shield bow which again i think is undertuned at the moment because it's just not picked unless you're draven really <laughs> or samira mm-hmm. that i mean those those all or nothing champions are going to pick that because they want the extra shield right but that's it um whereas like jinx it feels a lot harder like if you're not going kraken slayer because you want the attack speed bonus um and and the true damage which is nice for her but then you have champions like zaya who can opt for the more pokey Eclipse build or can go for the Gale Force build. Um, she's not really... I feel like if you're going Lethality, Zaya, you that's not it anymore. It's not, much. but I think it, it, it's there's a possibility. Like, it's it's not uh, the worst. You, it's I wouldn't do it. It's playable, like, but... I feel like I'm substantially... Uh, making the odds worse for my team if I... Well, you had to look at, too, what this guy said. You have to consider the meta, of course. Like, I, it wasn't too long ago that it was meta to go Lethality, uh, Zaya, right? And same thing with, like, 
Varus. It wasn't too long ago that going without a Pope Varus was the thing, and right now attack speed is the thing because they kind of try to buff is some it? stuff there. Yeah, attack I speed Varus right now. Is the... all, all in pro play, it's always poke. Sure, sure, but I guess I, that's in, just the difference in the in the Elo and, and obviously the pro meta is always going to be a little bit different than than um, the lower Elo meta for sure. But yeah, so I I think it's not. Like, the homogenization of the item builds, I think, are meta-related, if that makes sense. Hmm. So, is, is this based? Mm, no. I, I see what you're trying to say, but I don't think you're correct. Right. Let's move on down. Thoughts on people trying to learn new champs and roles in Ranked? Okay. I know we've always we've all been here. Yes, and you know what? Uh, I do have a point to make on this. But we'll although I I think it's... Well, go ahead. Go say what you're going to say. I was just going to read. It says, what is your opinion on people trying to play new ranks or champs or, or new roles and doing it in rank compared to unranked? It says, I report it. That's basically griefing unless you're an iron or something and everyone's going to be just bad anyways. If it's ranked, <laughs> I report it. Literally other, any other game mode, you do you. How else am I supposed to learn new champs? Um, I will say there is some some point here is is like it sucks when it happens to you when you're in your promos and then this person just fucking uh feels like it's they're just griefing however normals are so kind of fucked normals are like the equivalent of professional scrims where like if the game ain't fucking going right after like 10 15 minutes it's just a forfeit so if you're trying to learn a new champion you never get to learn uh really late game or even like mid to late game like that that mid late to late if that makes sense Mm -hmm. because there's early game and there's like early mid game which is like those those who's rotating earlier who's getting the objectives earlier and then making the rotation to to push their lead and snowball versus who's sitting on their laurels and not doing shit um and then there's mid game where it's like okay now as a team we we start making these moves around the fucking map and then there's like that mid late slash late game where it's like okay now are we going to take this objective and do this or are we going to give that objective up uh for for this idea instead and so you don't get to learn how to play your champion in those later stages in normals oftentimes because people are so quick to just give up also normals uh you don't know if you're going to get matched against a challenger tier player yes on the opposite team yes and you don't get any practice in that that's extremely um, not fucking helpful when that shit happens. I, I'm on I'm on both sides. It's very frustrating if that person's on your team. But I feel like if you're not playing and ranked, you're not gonna be in those situations where you're like, okay, I gotta focus and I gotta I gotta learn to do this. If you're in normals and you're just like, oh, it's normals, I don't really care, you're probably not gonna try. Right. Um I've experienced feel like that. no no matter what game mode you're playing, uh your your goal should just be I mean, obviously, one to get better, but your goal should be to try to win the game. Yeah. And it, if you know you're getting shit on, I've done it. I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'm over this game. I'm not really going to try. But, like, going into it, and that's just the problem with, with normals. I think the mentality is way more relaxed, and then just the matchmaking is all over the fucking place, and it's I just don't really like playing normals that often. Um, I just playing in a ranked environment is... At least you're going to play with the people, hopefully, unless they're Smurfs, in your actual rank. And it's going to stress you to get better at whatever you're learning. Right. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. Um, These people, it's kind of 50-50 here. Can't control what they do. Yeah, you can't control people. Um, I mean, I guess if you feel like you need to report someone and that's going to make you feel better, just do it. I don't think anything will happen. Right, right. Yeah, it's hard to... This one's hard. It's hard to say that it's based or not because I've I've I feel like I've been on both sides of the coin and like neither side feels good. It's like I can't practice or learn anything because you get into a fucking game and you're playing its fucking platform. Like, dude, a I'm mid silver and b I'm learning a new champ or role, which means I'm really just fucking bronze four. <laughs> like, you my know other, what I mean? It's like my other favorite fucking thing is when people like we're playing a game and. This person's getting shit on, and then they're like, oh, first time playing this champion. I'm like, so is it the champion's fault that you're pushed up with no vision? Is it the champion's fault you're not warding? Is it the champion's fault that... I'm like, no, that's you. You're just making dumbass excuses. Sure, you maybe you just don't know what the champion... Well, you should know what the champion does. 
Right. I, I don't agree. know. It, it maybe maybe I'm leaning to like. I don't know. I I'd say it's it's neutral. As it's it's, yeah, it, it's neutral because it does. I think you're right. There is a a collective knowledge that you should have, or base knowledge you should have of the champion that you're wanting to play. Uh, like you should have played this champion in at least an ARAM or something before, some other game mode before. Where you're like, okay, this champion seems fun. I want to learn how to actually play this champion, and then having a base under like learning a base understanding of like okay how do you lane you know you may not have to have the greatest fucking grasp of a champion but if you play it in ranked and and you could still be decent but like having absolutely no grasp of what this champion like if i just went in and played fucking ribbon i'd be trolling but like <laughs> if i went in went in and played uh fucking name me a champion that i don't really play but i could if i really wanted to like fucking talon i may not win as Talon, but I probably am not going to feed. Like, I may not be the threat that I want to be, but, like, I have a, a basic understanding of, like, this is how you play Talon. No, I'm not going to escape from everything because I don't have the fucking moves. But, like, I could play the champion and get some kills. So, I, I think you're right. I might agree with the uh, neutral on that one. Alright, let's do, let's do, like, maybe one or two. Two more. Okay, uh, I see you got one. Any, what do you see? I do see one that says a question about new surrender changes. Alright. Um, it says, I don't tend to use the subreddit much anymore, but I'm curious about people's general opinion on the 4-1 to surrender changes. I've just played a game where someone rage quit after 5 minutes. My team could then 3-1 to surrender the game 90 seconds after he leaves, and I lose 26 LP without even having a say. I understand that people are sometimes being held hostage, but the new changes result in a lack of control that sits a little uneasy with me. Uh, uh, I don't think you would lose 26 LP. Well, you lose a lot right now. I lost like fucking 24 the other day. But the fuck. But did someone rage quit? If they rage quit, I think you get mitigation. You get the yeah. There's two, no, I don't. LP I don't drop. believe. Sorry. So 20, 24. Okay. I don't. Unless this guy's MR is completely fucked. I don't think you would be losing that much. You get lost. Yeah, you get lost. I don't think you would lose 26 for someone. When you quit, uh, when you surrender early, because I don't know, I, you might I lose twenty two. But the other thing too, I've noticed is the LP gain is astronomically high. Like I think I won a game, and got like thirty one. I'm like Jesus fucking Christ. So I just the number, like it's weird to say, but I'm like I feel like you just lose more and gain more, but it's still effectively the same fucking mechanic. If that makes sense. Right. I mean, now you don't have to sit through man. Sure. I mean, LP LP gains and losses were brutal last year um uh, yeah you would take you like two more than you would lose if you lost so it's like you're not climbing anywhere i, I would you be getting like i was getting like 12 lp and then losing like 15 right and it would fucking take me i'm trying to do quick maths like nine games to get to fucking promos uh well they got rid of the 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 tier promos but right um i mean it's it's i feel like if you're if you're winning games, if you're good, you're going to win games, you're going to win LP, and you deserve to rank up. If it, The game will, as much as we shit on this game, it will definitely be able to determine your skill level, and I think it does it pretty accurately. I don't think it matters how much they're giving. Like you said, it's they just bump the numbers up, but it's still... It makes you feel better, but yeah, it's, the, it's the like, disparity is the same, like... I think right. I was losing 12 and getting 17 last year, and now it's like, okay, well, we bumped it up a little bit, but now you lose 24 in game 30. I'm like, okay, five versus six. Like, what? who cares? I do, like, just be like, oh, now I only have to play, like, five games to get to so next, a tier up. Yeah, which is nice. Um, but let's see. He said, I understand that people are sometimes being held hostage, but the new changes result in a lack of control that sits a little. So he's complaining that it's not fair. Yeah, I or, guess, but it's like if someone rage quits, dude, just move on with your life, man. I know he is he is he mad that they surrendered with a person that quit on their team. Yeah, he just said he's like, well, I don't want to quit. Um, friend, this guy's this guy's one hundred percent low elo. So yeah, someone else over <laughs> here is saying, uh, looks like Arachnid God nineteen ninety says you would have lost the game even if you dragged out to twenty minutes. I don't know why you want to hold three other players hostage for 15 minutes who don't want to play out a 4v5 for the same exact outcome. Where it says, I lose 26 LP without even having a say. Because what you're effectively saying is, what I want is more important than what these three other people want. And that's the definition of narcissism. <laughs> no, I, if if the majority if the majority of the people on your team don't want to play the game and they want out... There's no point. You should just get out. Like, 
if if it's if anything, if you're the one holding hostage, like this guy, who it literally just blatantly admits to, um, that's gonna destroy the other people on your team. They're just gonna want to give up, and then you're gonna get even more mad that you guys don't win. You're not gonna win. The chances of you winning are so low that it's not worth the mental uh, toll it takes on you. Just you know, just forfeit. Get right. up, walk around. You're getting lost, mitigated. Give like five minutes and then get back and play the fucking game, dude. Right. Yeah. So someone else. So he, he responds to this person. He goes, I've been playing since season two. The amount of 45s on one is astounding. Also, what if the guy comes back? Do we not want to give someone a chance? The amount of catch up mechanics in the game now make winning from losing position more possible mm-hmm. than ever. It's not about narcissism. It's in fact, it's the complete opposite. It's optimism. There is a non zero chance that we win the game and I'm not even giving given an opportunity to try yada, yada, yada. So the guy responds, he goes, so you you're trying to say you're part of the 3%. He goes, I don't, I don't know what you mean. He goes, do you not read why they change it from five to four votes? They have science-based data for it. They didn't change it on a whim for shits and giggles. 90%, 97% of games end in a loss that get held hostage by a four to one vote past 20 minutes. Okay. Only 3% are winnable. But that <laughs> means out of a hundred early FFs, only three of them are winnable. That's why they changed it. You That's- can't, you can't really argue against actual like hard data like that. Again, we shit on Riot a lot of the time, no, but this is a pretty right. good idea that they, you know, they test it out and they're like, okay, 97% of the games are not winnable. And then All right, this, let's this, just change the, yeah. yeah. And this dude just gets mad. He, he I know. He, it, I, I see it here. He goes, where well, you can't have a discussion or debate without being condescending with emojis. Like, all right, dude, like this guy, he's like, this is data and fucking analysis. And it's, it's proves that it's good for game development. That's what data science is. Holy fuck. <laughs> so yeah uh not based i'm just i don't have to read anymore not yeah based. I, a little this one's this one's like mega not based a little unhinged um yeah i think you just need a nappy and like your bottle right and um yeah i so. was i was gonna say that's the last one but there's one last good one i think we can end on a positive note here oh god okay it says what in your opinion is the wildest most impressive ultimate ability of any champion Okay. Uh, it says, I think Mordekaiser's ult is pretty wild. Sucking someone else into the death realm, or Ohio, as Purple calls it. <laughs> it's about that 1v1 is pretty crazy. And if they added that skill as a new thing today, I think it would still impress people. And obviously, a bit, Sky's Descend from Aurelian Soul is one of the biggest ults there is in the game, period. Which ultimates leave you in awe. First one that comes to mind, and is probably... I really like Cataclysm. Uh, that's such a good one, ult. It's just epic as shit. It is. Um, probably Equalizer Rumble is just like oh, especially in pro play. Um, Oriana Shockwave, like if it hits a if it hits a five man Shockwave, like, oh like, holy shit, that's such a, it's a beautiful play. You, the other one I still thoroughly enjoy, and and it's like the fucking cheapest, most annoying fucking ultimate because you know you know when it's gonna happen and you know that you're dead is uh Garen <laughs> just yelling yeah. justice. Like it kind of leaves me in awe. I'm like mother. Fucker. like he knew especially he was gonna execute me with that shit especially if you're like he gets the animation off and then you flash and you still, and you still fucking die. die yeah yeah that one's oh, pretty man. funny but like <laughs> and then obviously darius has his version of the dunk right the dunk the come on and slam like that one's pretty good too um, um. Yeah, oh darius. echoes is pretty good as annoying oh, and frustrating as it is shit it's two over it's like one more time. But, like, but oh. if you're playing Echo, it's super satisfying. Kind of like Garen. Like, when you're playing Garen and you get it, it's just satisfying as fuck. Um, I think if we're talking about... We could talk about satisfying. I think uh, Deathmark, if you get the pop oh, yeah. after the, the delayed boop, yep. and you get the kill, it's that's very satisfying. A good, um, a good talent ulti in a team fight just to blast mm-hmm. everybody. That's pretty good. Or a Jinx Rocket across Jinx, map. Jinx Shilling Rocket Baron. Or, or Ezreal uh, ult. Ash um, arrow cross map. I mean, I, I also got to go with just gangplank. I just love hearing. Yeah. The fact that you can hear his voice like across the map is fucking sick. Uh, or hear him laugh. Right. Um, when he pops the cannon barrage, that one's really fucking good. You gotta love the MF uh, bullet time where bullet she uses good. shock and awe. Has to leave you in awe. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of those maybe. Oh, Alawi. Allow oh, all God. a good allow all that's like dude game changing game breaking you know um yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, he already said it, but a oh, million souls. Oh. And we forgot Malphite. Oh, the football, baby. Dude, speaking of, I was watching LPL today, and it was EDG versus BNG, I think, and, and BNG ended up winning the series. Spoiler alert. Um, Malphite got a pentakill as tank Malphite. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> From I'm a losing position, sh- too. I'm pretty sure he is getting uh, touched for the next patch. Yeah. Just on the preview, so. so yeah. it's definitely broken right now. No, but, that, that's definitely one that leaves you in awe, because when you get a big Malphite ulti, you're just like, oh, shit. It's just bowling ball in on the pins, and just, it's a, it's a beautiful sight. Kind of like the shockwave. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> All right, I think that's a good place to, to yeah. end it off here. Um, right yeah, on. guys, that was fun. Uh, a lot less unhinged ones than I was expecting. Um, but you know, this, if, oh, go ahead. I'll say that first, we, I gotta call that one based. I gotta say that was, that was yeah. a based, a based, um, thread. Uh, secondly, um, if this is something you guys would like to see more frequently, um, like Dean said, this was pretty fun. I thought this was interesting. Um, it's funny just to look at what other people think. Cause sometimes when you post on Reddit, you may think you're hella fucking right. Only to find out that you're hella fucking wrong. <laughs> and like, sometimes you have to get out of your own, uh, I guess echo chamber would be a good way to put it to like realize like, Oh yeah, no, I'm just really fucking wrong. Like I should shut up now. <laughs> oh, you know, one more thing I wanted to say back sure. on the, back on the discord, I made a thread. Uh, Cause we always, Tyler and I always talk about it. Um, funny, uh, summoner names you guys come across. Um, oh yeah. If you guys see some, take a screenshot and put it in this channel. Uh, the ones I posted or the one I posted was this Leona going ash to mouth. It was fucking great. Uh, and then Calientes, uh, <laughs> Calientes, uh, had one for a nocturne was a masturbator. Ye. Okay. Jesus. It's a little graphic, but yeah, if you guys come across any, like silly, funny, um, crazy summoner names. Uh, go ahead, come over to the Discord and uh, post them up in here. But yeah, that is gonna be it, guys. We'll be back on Friday for champion review, and then Saturday we have the giveaway stream. So make sure you uh, join the join the Discord um, and follow the Twitch channel. Everything is in the link tree in the description. Uh, 12 p.m. PST. We're going to be ready. We're going to have some fun. We're going to give away some shit. Who doesn't want free shit? Like, I love free shit. Who doesn't shit. want free RP? So make sure you guys are here on time and come chill with us. But, yeah, we'll be back on Friday. So uh, enjoy your week and good luck in your games. Good luck, guys. Be safe. And I hope to see you on Saturday. If you're listening to this episode, you don't get to the Friday episode on time. I do hope to see each and every one of you on Saturday in some way, shape or form, whether that's participating or just in the stream, in the, uh, in the chat. So, uh, again, thank you. Peace. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure to like the video and sub to the channel. If you haven't already click right here to see the previous episode of the according to low ELO podcast, click right here to see the most recent gameplay video. Thanks again.